was that Alcindor had injured his eye the week before in a game against California. Still bothered by vision problems, Lou elected to play anyway. However, from the opening tip, it was clear that the evening belonged to Elvin Hayes and the Houston Cougars. Comes up with a steal. The Cougars on the attack. Shaney setting up Lee. That's Hayes, 17-footer. Houston leads 2-0. The Big E rarely missed, hitting 17 out of 29 shots from the field and finished with 39 points. Hayes in the corner. Houston leads. In the end, Hayes' two free throws clinched the win for Houston as the Astrodome went wild. The final score, Cougars 71, Bruins 69. In the early 1970s, the only team talented enough to end the UCLA Bruins' seven-year reign over college basketball was the 1973-74 North Carolina State Wolfpack. A unique collection of individual talents, Coach Norm Sloan's team featured three key players of very different style. The 74 national champs were built around the big man, 7-foot, 4-inch Tom Burleson. Big Tom was a dominant presence inside with his rebounding, scoring, and shot blocking. On the wing, superstar forward David Thompson a three-time All-American and Player of the Year in 1974. Thompson gave the Wolfpack unstoppable offense with his 42-inch vertical leap and a soft shooting touch. Orchestrating this high-powered offense was the diminutive Monty Tau, standing only five feet, six inches tall. Tau's floor leadership, hustle, and clutch shooting made him arguably the most important member of the super team. In 1974, North Carolina State finished the season as the number one ranked team in the country. In the national semifinals, the Wolfpack faced UCLA for the second time that year. The game was hotly contested throughout and went to double overtime. In the second overtime, the Bruins watched an early seven-point lead slip away as North Carolina State stopped their 38-game tournament winning streak, 80-77. to In the finals, behind David Thompson's 21 points, the Pack defeated Marquette 76-64 to, to earn their first national championship and secure a place as one of the greatest teams in the history of college basketball. The game of college basketball has seen some classic matchups over the years. Alcindor Hayes, Walton Burlinson. In 1979, two more superstars met head-to-head. -head. Irvin Magic Johnson of Michigan State and Larry Bird of Indiana State. Simply stated, college basketball took a quantum leap forward for the emergence of these two stars. Never before had the game seen a six-foot-nine-inch guard who could control a game quite like Magic. I said it, and I'll say it again, that... In my whole basketball career, I've only seen eight or ten very special players, and he's one of those eight or ten. Uh, he combines uh, not only a, a wonderful gift, but an incredible amount of tenacity and uh, desire to win. He pushes other people. He's just a great leader. As for Larry Bird, the skeptics claim he couldn't run, jump, or succeed against quality competition. Well, the skeptics were wrong. Bird finished his career as the ninth leading scorer in college basketball history, averaging over 30 points per game. The long-awaited shootout became reality as Magic Spartans 
and Bird's undefeated Sycamores met in the 1979 final. When the smoke cleared, Magic Johnson's 24 points carried Michigan State to the national title. However, the big winner this evening were the millions of basketball fans across the country who witnessed the emergence of two of the game's greatest players. And basketball had its first glimpse of the Bird Magic era. College basketball. For 100 years, it has produced many magical moments. Players who changed the game, coaches who were innovators, teams that performed miracles. Today, basketball is at the height of its popularity. With the NCAA fielding a 64-team men's tournament and the women's game reaching new levels of excellence. From Dr. Naismith's peach basket dream through a century of spectacular athletic achievement, the glory of the game continues. 